Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a tactic stock, guys. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. Let's get this sorted out here. All right, there we go. Now you can see the names. This is my EU account. I'm on my T20. I'm on my, I'm in my, I'm driving my, I have my T20 on the EU account. And it is top of the tree. Is that what it is? That's what they call it. Top of the tree, I think, or something like that. Not an on track. I think it's, I think it's called top of the tree. Anyway, I decided to play the T20. So I bought it. One of the few tier sevens that I have. You can see that I've got the stock-ish 76. The second gun is on it. Everything else about this tank is stock. So why are we here? Well, we're here to prove that you just play the game. It doesn't really matter what your configuration is. Do your best. <laughs> I'm going to actually finish MT-15 on this for the Stug 4, which is not that hard. You need to kill two TDs. Now, I don't know why it is every shot you don't take, you miss. I don't know why it is that Wargaming thinks medium tanks are TD hunters. I, I, don't, I don't quite understand that. I, I really don't. But anyway, let's just pause it here because we're on Glacier. And I've headed over here to the heavy area. Generally speaking, heavy area. I am middle tier in a three-tier battle. There are two artillery. The WZ is going to be problematic for me. They've got a couple of their heavies that can punish me pretty badly. A number of TDs. Remember, I need to kill two of these things to finish the mission, amongst some other things. I have to damage five guys, kill two TDs, and we need to win. There you go. And I've decided to come over here because I knew I had the stock gun. I just wanted to be that annoying guy. I wanted to track guys. I wanted to be in there, irritating the heavies in the heavy area, attempting to get my heavies and whatnot doing their thing. You'll notice that the Renegade didn't even come here. He's in the middle with two artillery. That's a genius position for him. KV-2, ISU, and an SU-100M1. I like the SU-100M1 in this position. The ISU is okay if he can avoid getting tracked and killed, and he can actually bring that big gun to bear. That'll be fantastic. And, of course, the KV-2 is going to shave hit points off of anybody he hits. In addition to that, we took the top of the, took the, top of the carrier, I didn't show it to you, but the AMD and LT mentioned they were going to go up the carrier, which was another reason why I kind of came this way. I said, well, if they can get the carrier and I can get this forward position because even stock this tank is pretty quick, then I can get into this spot and be super annoying to the heavies, provided I can keep guys like him coming around here and punishing me. Now, the problem is I don't have quite enough guys over here. I wish somebody was on that corner that would stop him, this AMX or AM, yeah, AMX from coming around the corner right there. But I also have artillery, and there are guys up on the carrier. So let's just see how this thing goes. The T21 is looks like he's kind of doing the same thing I'm doing. I'm going to try to track this guy. I get a crit. I get actual damage, which surprised me a little bit. I'm just sneaking into that side armor. Another one. He just fired, so I'm going to keep on firing. And I just cannot track this dude for anything. This gun does not have a lot of alpha, so I'm just not damaging the module enough and that's what I was worried about the M445 comes around the corner and stops me from being the annoying guy so that makes me change a little bit what I'm doing I do need to watch out for the artillery because you can see I'm looking both ways like holy crap if one of these or both of these push me I'm probably dead I do have to watch out for the artillery because it can clear this this little glacial piece this piece of ice if I get too far up here and the arties are paying attention so I'm wondering what this heavy's going to do is he really going to come around so I just wait. I'm like, well, I'm just, I'll just get my shot. He'll shoot, and I'll get another shot, potentially. Especially if I can track him. There we go. So we try to track him. It doesn't work. He fires. He's got kind of the stock gun going on, so I'm just going to get in there and get one more shot and back out. <clears throat> Worried about the WZ, but again, that ISU has that big fear factor, the Su-100M1 as well. He's just hard for a WZ to pen. And that is all calculus that's going through my mind right here. I'm like, well, the WZ... If he hits two, we'll have a chance against the Su-100. Otherwise, he's going to have a really hard time getting a shot. The ISU is there. If he comes around the corner too much to punish him, there's two guys up here, and now I'm kind of counting on those two guys to start helping me with it, this M445. There is a 25 slash 2. You can see that he was moving up, but we haven't seen from heard or seen him for a moment. There's the M4. He's kind of backing out. All right, so I was moving up thinking the M4 was going to turn around and turn his turret, but he actually turned back towards me. And then the T25 slash 2 shows up. Thankfully, these guys spotted him. And that lets me slam on the brakes and get back before he actually slaps me. More than likely, if he'd have got a shot on me, that was all over right there. 
He is way too wide. That's just very foolish right there. I don't really know why he's doing it like that. Uh, bad player isn't really thinking, but the AMD and the LT432, now he's not looking. Neither one of them is. I almost got there, but his turret was fast enough, so I resisted the temptation. That's good news. My artillery is paying attention right now to this little corner. Looks like they're looking for shots, and I'll just come around here. He was looking up, so I'll take that opportunity to pop out and get rid of the 25 slash 2. That's one of the TDs. I wasn't really thinking about it actually at the time. I was just playing the game. That is one thing with the missions that I do, unless it's some of the more difficult ones or very specific missions. I've just been turning them on and going. So I'll try to track this guy. And it looks like he has his kid again. That one goes into the front. He's fired, so I'm just going to keep on trying to track him. Like I said, I just had a really hard time getting her done right here. And that might have done it. Yeah, it looks like I finally detracted him, but it didn't matter. That keeps him stable for a minute. All right. We're starting to win this corner, and one of the biggest problems with winning this corner with players that aren't very good is they'll continue to push. So I'd really like to get rid of the WZ. There's the AMX. The WZ goes around the corner. I'm kind of waiting for the KV-2 or somebody to prove he's really around the corner. And then I'm going to bail out. Okay? Stop pushing TDs. You know there's a bunch of campers up there. It looks like an AT. There's a Su-100. I would imagine the AC-46 is up there somewhere. There's an AT-15 with decent hit points right there, backing up the WZ. No reason to push, but of course they do. ISU dies. No surprise. That, 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 is, that is a surprise to absolutely nobody but him. <laughs> nobody is surprised he died. Driving in the open with two artillery and a bunch of TDs camping. Just stupid. All right? JFS, just effing stupid. Stop doing that, guys. This really is one of the most classic maps for that because people win the heavy corner up there and they want to push across and push up. And we're winning, we're winning, you know. Uh, no, no, you're not because you're going to get farmed. This is the problem with these 76s. They are a bit derpy at range. You can see how big the circle is on that guy's like, holy cow, finally get one shot in on him. 3045 M's reload really fast, relatively, so he takes them down, and that's fine. You can see I've completely changed my position on the map there. Again, there was no reason to push in there. So I'm just going to go somewhere else. You can see the 432 has got the same idea. He's starting to come off, and he does some good work over here. I'm going to come up and look for maybe somebody. This is a bit dangerous. If one of those guys was sitting there, I probably could have got thumped. Now I'm looking at the map going, you know what? What I need to do is go around this promontory right here. Yes, from what I can tell with the CS44, see how far he's moved up? There's nobody up top there, and I tried to get out of the way. There we go. So we let the 432 faster tank move through. I'm a little bit hesitant right here. I think I gave away some shots because the 432 really moves in. I should have taken the fact that he hasn't been shot for a good sign and just followed up with him because he's already shooting into the back of the WZ and the AT-15. I'll move around here. 432 is farming. One of those two. I think the WZ dies here pretty quickly. Now I'm looking for shots. Down goes the WZ from the KV-2. And then the AT is behind the rock. He actually does a pretty good job surviving right here. He's got a KV-2. The KV-2 is backed off. I really don't know what the KV-2 is doing. To be honest. He probably took some hits and didn't want to die. He backed. Now he's coming forward. Now I'm looking for shots on the AT-15. And... Unfortunately, now I'm close enough to him that he's going to see me when I see him, more than likely. And there he is. So I just don't have a shot. 345 pushes in. The AMD, hey, I do. I approve that right there. He gave it a shot. He tried to land on the AT-15. That was fantastic. I don't know if he... He may have actually taken some hit points off of him. And then I come in here, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I got a nice shot on this guy. So we'll just do this. And, oh, it takes forever to load. Up. Ah, not load, but zoom. And I'm pretty sure he knows I'm here because what happens is I start looking for these other TDs. I'm like, wow, are they going to come around the corner? All right, there's one there. And look at it. Boom. He actually turned on me, nicely done, and got a shot, but got shot in the back. So we got rid of that guy. That would have actually been my second TD right there. Only 894 damage. We got a kill. We're going to come up. I'm going to use this these bushes here. The ELC is raging around. And I know there's probably a TD or two sitting here. So I find the AT. I just take a poke and just pray it goes into that little hatch up top. But it doesn't work. I don't really want to 
poke again. I'm wondering, where is this AC? Here comes the ELC. The LT-432 rages in. I think he, yeah, he rams that guy and we'll just start punishing the AC-46. And actually, this ends up being my second TD kill. We'll get rid of him with 1,157. And unfortunately, there's only one guy. I know it's the ELC. I'm thinking, I really have to hit this guy. Here he comes. I'm thinking, I only have one chance of this. No, that screwed that up. I'm dead. Boom, gone. 1,157, 128 with two kills. Just exactly what I needed. You hit here. We still needed to win, but you can see I've got five damage to five enemy vehicles, two destroyed TDs. So a couple things here, and I didn't mention as, as we went. Number one, so what if you're stuck? Well, I did talk about it a little bit. Go to where the important positions are. Continue to play the game as you would normally. Take into consideration that you may not have the greatest gun. So that's going to inform some of the things you can or cannot do. Continue to, to flex, to reposition, whatever word, metaflex, whatever it is you want to call it, around the map. Go to the right places. Don't push into TDs. You notice I swung all the way down to the south, came around behind, got up underneath, tucked up underneath where the TDs are, and that's then how you get to the TDs, right? You've got to work your way in there to keep on maneuvering towards them. Really, I was looking for as much spotting as I could get, but I ended up with not very much because other guys were doing all the spotting, but I was able to put myself into a position to take down the second TD. Thank goodness one actually drove up and it'll let me kill him, so that, that worked out, that helped out. But when you're talking turreted TDs, things like that, the assault TDs, you will find them forward at a lot in a lot of cases, so you won't have to dig every TD that you shoot. There are follow-on missions that get harder, you've got to kill more TDs, do more things, all that stuff. The stug ones are fairly easy. It's kind of fire and forget, turn them on and they will get done pretty quickly. But if you looked at that and went, ooh, I'm in a medium and I want to go kill some TDs, and you were in this game, you went, oh, I got the T-25 too because he was forward, then you needed to find a way to get into the backfield and start killing a TD. And the way you do that is you just keep playing the game. Do the game. Don't worry about, uh, you know what I should have done? I forgot. I did not give them the obligatory I'm stock call at the beginning, right? That's the one That's the one that uh, excuses you from all failures, right? <laughs> So anyway, there's an MT-15 done. What I did with the crew member that I got, because it was with honors, I got a ticket as well, or an order, whatever it's called. I took that commander, that crew member, made it a commander, and put it in the T-20. So that crew didn't even have six cents. They were at 90-something percent on their first skill. So now it's got a good commander with six cents, and I think it comes with brothers in arms, and it's working on the vision one, whatever the one for the commander is. That's going to make that tank a lot better, and I'll work through the top of the tree. So I just wanted to throw that out. It wasn't a fantastic game, but it got a big mission done, and it was basically a stock tank. So there's really no reason why you can't do well on them. Clearly, if I was facing some Tier 9s, there's a lot of other what-ifs here, but you can't really get into every single what-if just to prove that you can't do anything. It, this was not that situation. I actually had a pretty good setup for this Tier 7 with some tier sixes to beat on and that kind of stuff. And I actually got a fairly, a relatively difficult mission done, uh, depending on how good you are at the game. So I just wanted to throw that out for you guys. Kind of wide ranging, talk, talking about a lot of different things in there. And that is all I've got for today. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Thanks for supporting the channel. As always, if you're looking for other ways to support, you can find those down in the description. We will see ya.